I am pushing the limits on the Mavic Mini with a 3S battery pack on 12 volts. But is it worth it? Let's find out. Hi guys, it's Zoli here, I hope you are having a great day. In this video I am going to take apart my Mavic Mini to connect an external battery to it. These four screws need to be removed first, and these are just uh, Philips screws. I do this because I wanted to have a hardwire connection to the external battery pack to make sure that uh, during the abuse nothing can happen. So I pry open the Mini, I never done this before so it took around 10 minutes and uh, I actually managed to take it apart without breaking anything. Here is a close-up of the ESC, the electronic speed controller, which uh, gives the signal to the motors and a little bit of a showdown of uh, the inner parts. So I could remove the motor connectors from the ESC and uh, I could remove these three screws so that later I could fold up the GPS module. I could remove these two screws to remove the ESC and fold it over, but that's not what I'm planning to do. I just want to show you that here is two connection points for the battery which you can use. Here's a close-up of the ESC, part numbers and everything. And this would be the two connection points. But I'm not going to use these because if I use those, then uh, the cable is in the way and the stock battery cannot go into the drone. So instead I just do a simpler method. So I put everything back together and cut those plastic things and start to just solder up the battery connector on the ESC. These are the negative terminals. And here comes the two positive in the middle, just like in the earlier videos. And then I use 0.3 solid copper wires to connect to these. So these are the negative terminals and here are the two wires for the positive. Why I do this? I do this because I want to push these wires through those grills. These are like cooling fins or whatever. So later on I can just remove this and uh, the mod will have practically no mark on the drone. I didn't need to drill the casing or cut out pieces or whatever like that. So I just connect it this way. And then I pop the drone back together. Of course it's much easier to, to put this lid back than how it was to take it off. And uh, it fits fine. No bruises or no, no damage really to the, to the plastic. Don't forget the screws. And after tidying up these uh, cables, I can actually put on the battery pack. So here is my 3S battery pack. I'm using three 18650 cells. They're connected in series, so that adds up to roughly 12 volts, a little bit more, but let's say 12. Here are the drone connections, the supply lines and the data communication lines, and the battery management system board, which you haven't seen my earlier video, how I removed it from the battery, you gotta check it. So, of course, it makes sense to connect up the data lines and connect the grounds up. We cannot go wrong with that. But what do we do with the supply? Let's connect it up like this. Just everything together. It should work right. No, not really. The problem is that if the BMS gets to sense more than 9 volts, it uh, just uh, locks itself. It doesn't let anything to happen. Okay, so let's tap, tap into the 8 volts at the, after the second cell and give that to the BMS and the drone gets the 12 volts. That should work. Everyone gets what they need, right? Well, it will not quite work either. The problem is that uh, if the, the difference between what the drone is sensing and, as voltage and what the BMS is telling the drone should be the voltage, if the difference is too big, then it becomes like a power line or power system error and uh, the drone will cut everything. So we have to introduce a new part. I'm going to use this diode. It's a 95SQ015. It's a Schottky diode. You can look it up what that is. The point is it has very slow uh, voltage drop. So like this, the BMS sees around 8 volts and the drone sees around 7.8. Now if I put here a switch then and start up the drone like this, then everyone is happy, everyone is at 8 volts. And after the initial start of the drone happened, this check of voltage levels 
uh, is not there anymore. Afterwards, if it changes, it's no problem. So after flicking the switch, the drone gets 12 volts and the battery management system still sees 8 volts, which is very optimal for us because the, as, the, as the battery drains, what the BMS sees and reports back to the controller as it goes down, basically that's how the whole battery goes down if it makes any sense, because the BMS sees exactly the two-thirds of the full charge of the battery at all times. So the percentage of what the BMS says sees is directly related to the actual percentage of the full charge of the battery. I hope you understand to that. <laughs> so I'm just finishing up here, connecting up uh, the BMS, and uh, we are ready to test the thing. So I'm outside. Um, many of you have asked me to go out and test things, and anyway, wanted to test uh, the full speed or maximum speed with this mode. Now you see some oscillation happening here, but then it's, it settles the down, so I didn't worry about it too it much. But there is, uh, as far as the power of the drone is much more than it was before with this 12 volts, uh, the fine adjustments are a little bit exaggerated. That's why this oscillation happened. Plus, of course, the, the point of gravity of the drone is severely changed by having three 18650 cells on the top of the drone and nothing in the drone. So these factors, of course, all play a role, but uh, it settles down. So I didn't worry about it too much. It's just in the beginning and maybe it's how to calibrate something or I don't know how it works really, but. So as you see now, I'm in sport mode and I'm pushing it. And honestly, I have to tell you, I got very disappointed. I thought that, uh, oh, now we're going to get it. It's going to be like uh, super crazy um, top speed. The thing is that uh, the top speed is being regulated by the firmware. It uh, does not matter what uh, kind of battery pack do I put on it, which is in some way good because it protects the motors. I actually did notice that the motors are getting hot with this 12 volts. Here soon we're gonna hit the peak top 47 kilometers per hour or 29.2 miles per hour speed. I have been uh, ripping around with this uh, drone for, for a while here. This is what you see. I'm not uh, a great drone pilot. Uh, so I'm just going in circles back and forth in the immediate uh, area. And um, so as you see that Basically, the top speed is not affected by this. What a bummer, really. I, but uh, I hoped, but uh, this is what it is. So based on this or for this idea of gaining extra top speed, it does not work to do the 3S mode. But uh, of course, we will see other, other durability tests and whatever, because I'm still curious about it. But uh, I did, uh, while I was outside, I took with me a normal 2S battery pack also and tested it and the top speed was identical. So it shows that, uh, of course, the power is there because now it's a heavier drone and it can still go up to the top speed, which the normal battery does. But here I realized that my battery charge level indicator is not decreasing, so I got suspicious. I'm still they're levitating or flying here but i see that the connector is disconnected so i have no idea what the battery charge is so i just landed to be safe and then uh, when i dis when i reconnected the bms then i noticed that basically the battery level is pretty low now pretty low means no not that bad it's three and a half almost so it's roughly 35 percent left so i was ripping for 20 minutes outside and uh, probably another 10 minutes it could have been done with this mod, which is not bad. I'm not going to test it, to be honest with you guys, because I said that the motors are getting quite warm. Here you see the oscillation again. But then it settled down, so I did the same thing, I just didn't bother with it. And of course, if I switch to cinematic mode, where all these fine adjustments are more subtle by the drone, the oscillation even 
uh, goes away faster. It just uh, it just disappears immediately. So yes, this is the the backside of the extra power. And uh, if I would land the drone, I would I would just run it to like uh, eleven and a half volts and land it and take off again. Then the oscillation would not even be there. So here you see the inside testing of the 3S battery pack. Now it's auto landing going on, but I keep it up. And you see I went to two and a half volts per cell. Power is still there, but I don't want to drain the cells more because of course two and a half times three, right? So the drone sees seven and a half volts. So almost 36 minutes. But here is the thing. I received my 21700 uh, cells from Samsung finally. And this was a test I have been very curious about. What does the Mini do with uh, 4000 milliamp hours of high drain 21700 cells? So this is kind of a showdown between 2S versus 3S. Does the 3S mod worth? Is it worth it to do? Well, so now we are doing the 2S testing. As you see, the battery voltage is now what the drone really sees. We are hitting the 15, 16 minutes mark. And of course, it is much better for the drone. It's less weight, even though the 21700s are a little bit heavier cells. So we are looking at around 280 grams of full flight weight. And I understand, of course, the regulations and everything. I get it. So you do everything how you are supposed to be doing. This is important. So now we are at half an hour and uh, still 3.3 uh, volts per cell. That's uh, looking pretty good. I mean, the stock battery in the mini is uh, what? Uh, I think uh, 29 minutes was it or 30, something like that. Anyway, so you see, landing. now we are starting the Critically forced landing. But I can still keep it a little bit, but honestly not too much because uh, the drone is heavier and now really we are at uh, only 5.8 volts. And to keep that drone, this heavier drone with that uh, little voltage up is difficult. So here I can still gain elevation, but uh, the power is not really there anymore, so it's quite sluggish. So I just didn't want to push it anymore, so I let it to land here. But uh, 37 and a half minutes. I think that's pretty nice with these cells. These are very nice cells and the cells were not even hot at all. So I think the winner is the 2S. I don't recommend doing the 3S mod. I think 2S is very good. And as you know, I'm still waiting for my battery cells to arrive for the Mini 2. So stay tuned for those videos coming up. Guys, if you have anything to say or if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section. Check out my other videos if you're interested in the subject and please don't forget to subscribe. It really helps out a lot. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.